Calls later at 213-469-5533. This is a movie about a car? No, not about a car, about a, a rock and roll detective. Named Ford Fairlane? Yeah, named Ford Fairlane after the car. So he drives and that uh, kind of car. Yeah, he drives that car, and he's a rock and roll detective. And uh, I mean, the movie's just full of laughs. I mean, it's very funny. Your first film? Uh, well, it's my first major leading role. I've done other films like Casual Sex and uh, Pretty in Pink, but this this is the one. Okay. Is this an original story, or is it off a novel? Yeah, this is off of uh, these stories by Rex Weiner who wrote these stories for a magazine years ago, and then it was adapted into a screenplay. And uh, Dan Waters wrote the script, and then I punched it up as we went along. What, Andrew, is a rock and roll cop? No, rock and, a rock and, and roll comic? Detective. Yeah, he's a... Well, the story is based. This guy came out here from Brooklyn and wanted to be a rock star. Didn't work out for him. So now what happens, he decides to stay in rock and roll by becoming a detective and only working for rock and roll clientele. He represents, or he looks, he Yeah, he'll only work for, you know, like rock stars or producers, and he takes those kind of cases. And it's a fun movie. It's fast-paced, action-packed. I sing, I dance, I'm funny. And I'm incredible, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> the director's, a, he's on a roll. Yeah, Rennie Holland. I mean, he's we... He's got uh, Die Hard 2. Yeah, he, he's cooking, and, and... But it was great, because during, during the filming, Rennie came to me one day and said, both you and I will never have this much fun making a movie again. You know, I mean, we just had a great yeah, time. You probably never will. You know, I mean, it was just fun. I mean, everybody on the set was a moron or an imbecile, and it was, you know, we were shooting in Malibu, and, you know, and, and Rennie listened to what I told him, and he did a great job. Do you like making movies? Yeah, I do. Although it's not stand-up. It's not instant applause. You don't hear laughter. Yeah, but, you know, I, I look at even stand-up as acting. You know, that's one role. And so movies are different roles. You know, only with stand-up you had the live audience feedback. But I had the crew, you know. They laughed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They'd have to hold it in. That's how funny I am. But after the take, <laughs> then they, I'd give them the permission to laugh, and that's how it worked. But it is an extension of you, right? I mean, the shtick you do, the acting you do, is you. Well, of course it's me, but it's not, um, you know, it's, it's like I could watch you for the next 20 minutes and then pick up something from you, like the way you sit or the way you look at somebody, and I'll use that on stage. You know, I had a bricklayer come to my house in Brooklyn to put up a fence, and the next night I'm on stage doing them. You know, I mean, people have certain so you, quirks. So you're, you're, that's your shtick, in other yeah. words, for want of a better term. Yeah, it's almost impressions of, of people that aren't famous. How are you reacting, then, to all of this happening off what you do, not what you are, uh, but I, what you do? I think the media has made too much out of me telling dirty jokes. You know, I, I created a character that obviously a lot of people like. I mean, I fill every arena in the country. And, and the thing is, the media, instead of seeing the joke, they, they like say it's horrible, you know, but yet 20,000 people in an arena laugh like crazy. You How know? long have you been doing this? I've been doing this 12 years. Why now? Why, well, have, why has the media suddenly discovered this now? Well, well, because I'm only famous for about a year and a half. Okay. How'd you <laughs> get famous? I did um, Rodney Dangerfield's Nothing Goes Right special. I did about eight minutes on that, and the next month I was in concert. First concert I did was at Town Hall in Manhattan. 1,500 seats, it sold out like in 10 minutes, and we took it from there. Okay, now at that point, didn't someone interview you, ask you this, have you tell them this is the shtick I do, yeah, and but it goes away? I just don't think that, I think the media has more fun when they could rip into something. I mean, if they just turn around and say, the guy's great, he fills arenas, he makes a lot of people laugh, that's the end of it. But if they could just keep playing off the character, there's more to work okay. with. Why do you think, for example, they didn't do it, say, to Eddie Murphy, who curses a lot? Um, Eddie Murphy, you know, was a kid when he started out. That's number one. And he really, you know, I really don't know too much of his material to talk about, but um, he didn't really do it in a character form. You know, I do it with the leather jacket and the attitude, and, and there's just no editing when I'm on stage. No, is that, you're it from go to end, yeah. right? That's the character. I mean, when I put on my jacket, I'm Dice. You know, if Dice was to come out here and go, hey, Larry, what about what you do, eh? Okay, now that's you know, I mean, I yeah. knew guys you like know. Dice. And, and you, that's you're what from Chief Yeah, and that's, the best. that's Dice is a guy we knew. Exactly. There's a lot of Dices around. Yeah, but in a way, it's not because the language is what makes it funny. Those characters exist, but I haven't really met anybody that'll, that'll talk like that. You know, because I've said it in interviews before, I wouldn't really 
hang out with a guy that, that talks like that and believes those things. But you wouldn't I, like that guy? No. But comedically, I think it's funny. Why? Because I think in the, not even in the backs of people's heads, I think they really do think some of those things. You know, I, I think people do have one night stands and I, I think that uh, people do get aggravated if they're online at the grocery and have one item and the guy in front of them has a basket if that guy doesn't go, go ahead, go ahead of me. You know, and they get mad at it, but they stand there and, qu and they're quiet. But on stage, I call them on it. You know, or Earth Day, for instance. You know, everybody made a big deal out of Earth Day, and the next day people are walking around spitting in the street again. You know, it's like a day to barbecue. I went to 28 barbecues that day. Oh, this is biodegradable. This is by bi the next day they're throwing the wrappers in the street. I mean, people right. are hypocritical, you know. And, uh, is smoking part of the shtick? or? No, nah, I, I smoked for about the last 10 years. I'm, I'm going to quit pretty soon, I think. You know, I like it, but it's not the greatest thing for you, you know. But it is. I don't fun. recommend to kids that they start smoking if they like the character. But it know? works in the character, right? Definitely. Okay. Have you said anything to those other performers who have criticized you, like the, the people who wouldn't appear? With, were there anybody, for example, turned down being in a movie with you, to your knowledge? Uh, no. No. The movie they were happy to do? Yeah. Do you know any of these people like who wouldn't go on Saturday Night Live or something else? Did uh, you ever feel like calling them up and say, hey, you know, this is an act. I'm doing a bit. Well, they know that. You know, they know and why it. Why not go on? What's the difference? Well, I just look at it like, you know, when something's hot, it's like all these groups that deface my billboards and this and that. They know when they do that, that their name is going to be mentioned on the news. I really don't think they care if because they do that, my movie sells more tickets. But when they hear the name of that group on TV, they're going, oh, look, they're saying our name, you know. And so they go ah. after something hot. They're not going to go after a comic that started Monday night. They're going to go after someone that's hot and does this kind of thing. So what you're saying is if there were an actress booked on the show tonight and she announced she's not going to go on Larry King yeah, Live, her name's going to be on, mentioned. Her name is going to be yeah. mentioned. And you're saying that's for effect they're doing it because they yeah. should understand it's an act? I mean, you know, a great example is Nora Dunn. You know, I mean, she did this when she had one show left to do on her contract for Saturday Night Live. And when Sam Kennison did the show three years ago, she didn't boycott that because she still had three years of a contract left. So she tried to make a move, and it only helped me. How do you, do you like any of this, though? Frankly, it also has helped. No, I, I mean, this movie well, is probably, let's be honest, this movie has gotten some great reviews. It's probably also going to go through the roof. I mean, a lot of people are going to go yeah, see the I mean, it, it, it's, of going, it's going great. This publicity helps it, doesn't it? Well, it perversely does. helps it. Yeah, it does. It does. I can't say it doesn't because it does. So do you, in, is there a part of you that enjoys the attention this is getting? No, I think, I think it's too much. You know, I think they've made too much out of a comedian because that's all I am. You know, I'm an entertainer. If I was saying I'm running for president and saying those kind of things, that's a different ballgame. But as a comedian, I mean, I mean, I see myself on the news every day now and I'm going, it's too much. It's not that important. I mean, I love to entertain and I love to do movies and I want to entertain for the rest of my life, but it's... I don't think it's that newsworthy, you know, to be on every show and every interview. It's like, they make, and, and they're not even talking about me. They're talking about an acting part that I do every night of the week, when it, whether I'm on at the comedy store, whether I'm in concert. I'm an actor, and I'm playing this character so real that I've made all these reviewers and writers just, you know, sink their teeth into it. Let's talk about whether you want to or not go beyond that character. Our guest is Andrew Dice Clay. The film is The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Your phone calls will be included. This is Larry King Live in Los Angeles with this great crew out here on the west coast of CNN. We'll be right back. We'll go to calls for Andrew Dice Clay. He stars in The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, Murfreesboro, Kentucky. Hello. Hello. Tennessee, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Clay. Hi. How are you? Um, Mr. Clay, I just wanted to ask you, uh, you could probably succeed uh, without all the vulgarity and the obscenities because you're, I'm very impressed with your appearance and everything. My question is, do you feel that you are using the profanity and the vulgar words because you're just in, incapable of su succeeding as a real comic as Johnny Carson and Bob Hope and George Burns? Well, I consider myself a real comic and I use the kind of language I do because that's what I choose to do. How do you react? We, we, you mentioned the other performers. When other performers knock you? I mean, is it very, well, is you it know, very those, hard to take those on? Those same performers are performers that used to stand in the back of the comedy store and laugh at what I do. You know, and then when I became successful, more successful than any of them, now it's, you know, they try to feed off of me, and when they talk against me, 
the same thing. They get their name mentioned on TV. Are you angry at them? No, because I always consider myself like the Serpico of comedy. You know, from okay. the day, yeah. I mean, that's how, <laughs> you know, because when I started out, I used to do like musical impressions. And at that time, comics used to stand in the back of the room and go, what's he doing? This is the comedy store. He's singing and dancing, you know, and they, but yet the audience is laughing, you know. And then when I changed and I started doing more of a, you know, off-color routine, now they'd laugh at that. But now once I took off, it's like, well, why should he make it that big? Because some of the comics talking against me do, you know, off-color stuff. And, uh, you know. Jackson, Mississippi with Andrew Dice Clay. Hello. How are you? How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Great accent. Love that sound. Go ahead, dear. Uh, first, Andrew, I want to tell you that I do not consider you a sexist. I do consider nor done one. I love your act. It's fantastic. But if there's anything you could change about your act, what would that be? Um, maybe my wardrobe. The leathers are pretty heavy, you know what I mean? <laughs> are you getting a little tired of it? The wardrobe? Well, oh, it's a, those leathers are very heavy. They weigh like 20, 25 pounds. You, you could, why don't you wear this? Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to. Yeah, I mean, you, you, know. don't, you don't have to do it. No, but it's a show, you know what I mean? And I like to give them the show. You know, that's the, the dice kind of, on stage. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of stuff I, I got from Elvis, the garb and the, you know, the big glasses and the high collars and the studs, you know. That's part of the shtick. Yeah. Lansing, Michigan. Hello. Hi, guys. This is Jeff Floyd, your biggest fan. Your movie is great. I loved it. I said open tomorrow. It. Is it open already? No, it opened Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. You saw it, sir? Movie. My question for you is, do you think that part of your popularity is because you joke around publicly the way a lot of guys do privately? Well, yeah, in a way, you know, and plus, you know, I do concerts and that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, you know Charleston, I mean? South Carolina, hello. Hello, this is Karen, and Larry, I love your show, especially this week. Thank I you. Want, I wanted to ask Andrew, if your speech and your tears on the uh, Arsenio Hall show were genuine, and if so... I think my opinion of you has changed almost from disgust to admiration because I see the struggling comedian is separate from the character you, port you portray. I'm nervous. And I also wanted to ask you if you intend to phase out the dice man in favor of acting, but you sort of already answered yeah, that. that. What was that, Arsenio? What happened? Yeah, Arsenio? well, I sort of choked up. I wanted to get a point across that I've said to a hundred interviewers already that the bottom line, no matter what I do, you know, as far as language, I think people should look at more of what I did with my life. You know, how I push myself and how I think everybody, whatever that dream might be, whether it's, you know, I don't care if it's a truck driver or a doctor, but to go after what your dream is and, and just don't take no for an answer. So I got a little choked up right. over it. How do you resist the anger, though, when the dream comes true suddenly or people are angry or... Yeah, but my, the, the American public digs what I do. I mean, it's it's mostly reviewers I have to deal with, uh, writers, you know, and... Uh, and other performers, some other Yeah, performers. and then some other performers. I mean, there are performers that love me, too, you know. I mean, Wayne Newton is one of them, so... You, Wayne Newton, who's, uh, who, who has made speeches about working clean, hasn't he, Wayne Newton? Well, I, I don't know, you know, what kind of speeches he made, but I know he, he likes what I do, and he thinks, you know, that I'm a talent, you know. And, and you he, obviously think you are. Oh, definitely. Okay. Uh, I have a note here that says that there was a, a Fox canceled release of an Andrew Dice concert movie because of negative publicity, did they? Um, I have no idea. Today's Variety says that, that Fox canceled the release. Well, I didn't see that, so I don't know. Do you have a movie, an Andrew Dice concert uh, movie? We filmed The Garden. You know, what we're going to do with it, I don't know yet. You know, I more or less wanted to film it for the history of what I've done, you know, to play arenas. So, you know, yeah. whatever they do with it's fine with me. You wouldn't think they wouldn't release it, would you? Uh... I think they will. Columbus, Ohio, hello. Yes, I was wondering if you're able to se to separate your ego from your act, or is it part of both of you? Well, the only place Good I question. really have an ego is when I am performing. You know, I mean, obviously you don't know me when I'm not working, so all you've seen is, is the dice man, and the dice man does have a tremendous ego. You know, he could he could go with any woman. He could handle any situation, and uh, but off stage, I think I'm a little different. Uh, but all part of the act is that ego. This was oh yeah. I mean, he's the ultimate macho guy. Do you uh, do? You, let me get a break, and we'll come back and pick that up. Our guest is Andrew Dice Clay. He stars in The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. It opened Wednesday across America. 
And of course, they'll get the full results this Monday when they tab the figures. Everyone knows box office receipts, and the whole world will know Monday whether it's a hit or not. That's the way we judge things. Quickly, we'll be right back with Andrew Dice Clay after this. Andrew Dice Clay, you just signed, uh, who stars in The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, Fairlane from 20th Century Fox. You signed a new movie deal with them, too? Yeah, the next one I'm doing is uh, The Gossip Columnist for Fox. That's the title? Yeah. You play it's a gossip? It's like putting me in high society, which should be pretty funny. You Especially know. in view of what's Romantic going on Romantic comedy, now. It's, you know, it'll be a fun movie. Montreal, Canada, for Andrew Dice Clay. Hello. Yes, Andrew. Uh, since so many people are trying to ban your shows, uh, I was wondering what your views were on certain bands being banned, like censorship and all that, like Guns N' Roses and Two Life Crew. Well, I, I just think they're performers, and they should be allowed to perform, basically. You know, I don't think they're doing anything that wrong. I, I know more of uh, Guns N' Roses than I do of Two Life Crew. You like Guns N' Roses? Yeah. St. Joseph, Minnesota. Hello. Yes, hi, Larry. Hi. How you doing, Andrew? All right, what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm just wondering about um, your own feelings about women. Um, I understand the dice man. He's kind of a use them and lose them kind of attitude. And I'm wondering about your own attitude. To it. Does that reflect... No, you're kidding me? I'm crazy about women. How do you think I know so much about them? That, that, that just what bothers me. You know so much of them in the negative sense. No, of no, them. but that, that's my show. You know, I, I mean, you know, I have a girlfriend. I mean, you know, that, you know, I don't do any of the things I speak about on stage to. And maybe that's why my sex life is so boring. But, uh, no, but I, I'm nothing, you know, like what, what you hear on stage. That, that's a show. Uh, are there women comics, to your knowledge, doing any shtick that are anti-male? Um, I've actually seen women doing, uh, there, there's one or two women I've seen doing this Andrea Dice Clay, you know, which is pretty funny, you know. That's funny. Los Angeles, the movie is The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Hello. Yeah, it's really Sylvester Stallone. How you doing, Larry? Hey, man, what's going on? Well, it's fantastic. I want to say that I, it's a surprise call, actually. I had a friend of mine get in for me. Hello? Yeah, yeah. hello. But I think uh, when you're at the top, people tend to want to pull you down. And I think that Andrew's experienced something that I experienced. And I think it's pretty much just a phase, you might say. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check if this is you, okay? Hello? Yes. Where did I last see you? Uh, you, you came in and you sat next to me with your bad breath in Spago. <laughs> Wrong. But that guy does a great Stallone. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was a good Stallone. That was yeah. pretty good. Do you want to direct films? You like films so much. Uh, yeah, but I'm not ready for that yet. I mean, I, I make my own little movies and stuff, but, you know, and I'm practicing. Yeah, you do that. What are you doing? Filming your life? Yeah, I, I film, you know, I film a lot of stuff, but I also like to make, like, movies, and I use, like, my family as the cast, and, you know, to learn different angles and different shots, and one day I'll probably direct right. something. When we don't get the shtick, like MTV, banning you for life, which is kind of incredible to be banned yeah, from life I mean, or something. Yeah. What happens if the executives die and new executives take over? How did you feel about that? Um, I, I thought it was stupid, you know. I mean, I felt maybe they did what they did at the spur of the moment. You know, they also have sponsors that they have to answer to. And, uh, but I think the whole banning for life, you know, I don't think that'll be. You did, know. You, did you make a promise to them that you wouldn't do it? I mean, did they... No, that, that was all, uh, I don't know where they got that information from, but I wasn't planning on coming out and talking dirty anyway on the show. And it was just something that happened because they got me sort of shooken up before I went out. And well, I started. Well, they, they do something? Well, they were all over me. The producer, the director, tell me this, tell me that. And I, I'm going, you know, I'm walking out there. And two, it was right before I went out. And I started doing certain poems that I've used on TV before that, you know, go through the senses fine. And I started this other one, and, which was pretty new. And in the middle, I realized, you know, what the ending was, you know. <laughs> And it was like, well, what do I do? So I just went through it. I did another line or two, and I, you know, introduced Cher. It wasn't done intentionally. Was the Saturday Night Live experience a good one? Uh, as far as doing the show, yeah. it was great. You know, what happened with uh, that chick that uh, banned me or banned herself from the show for, you know, you know, that's never fun. You know, I think, I think it's silly, especially from other performers. Oh, another performer. David Letterman won't have you on his show, is that right? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not really trying to get on his show. I mean, the whole point I was making with Letterman was that I, you know, comics I've seen on his show, you know, aren't really that good, other than his friends, you know, like Leno and George Miller. Those are his buddies that he puts on regardless. But guys that I do know, 
that are, that are really, you know, top professional comics that audition time after time and let him in won't put him on because, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's something in him, I guess. You know, he gets a little nervous about it. What do you mean, jealous of good comics? Not jealous. He, he just doesn't want, I've never seen a comic really come out there and, and devastate a crowd. And he won't allow that, from what I understand. You know, and I think that's wrong because I think the job of any, any talk show host is to bring new talent on, you know, especially if they're great talent. Yeah. Uh, Burlington, Ver Burlington, Vermont, for Andrew Dice Clay. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. How do you feel about Howard Stern? The best. You like Probably him? the best DJ in the country. What do you think about the FCC today saying they're going to ban some of this stuff or proposing to ban it? Well, I don't know, you know. I mean, everything, I mean, today it's like everything's being banned. So, you know, it's like everybody jumps on the bandwagon. I mean, <laughs> that's funny. B A N N E D wagon. You know what I mean. But, uh, I mean, you know, everybody like does their job. It's All right, make a forecast for me, Andrew. How's the film going to do? The film is going to be the smash comedy hit of the summer. I mean, it's already, you know, doing great. You know, but I predicted that when we were on the set. I mean, as far as a performer, you know, I believe in myself so much that, I mean, I gave everything I had as far as you know, playing that role, so how can't you laugh? Yeah. Have you gone and watched it a lot? Uh, I've only seen it twice. With audiences, you know? like in the back of a movie theater? Well, yeah, I saw one, one in Jersey when they did a test screening and the crowd went nuts. I mean, I counted 30 big laughs and applause at the end. And then I went to a screening casting crew last Sunday. And, uh, I mean, it moves. It's fast-paced. I mean, there's no message in the film other than come in and laugh and have a great time. Which is what you're saying anyway, right? About yeah, your that's, that's all my answer.